Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot show for you today. Today's topic is hurt by the man you shared your pain with. Let's do it. Welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. All right, she's a woman of God with a doctorate degree in education. She's an author of the following books, A Prophet to Her Husband, The Secret of Loving Yourself, Wife Qualities, What Do You Do to Bring to the Table, Affirmations, Volume 1, and her most recent book, Wives in Waiting, 30-Day Journal, are all on Amazon. Let's welcome Dr. Mel to the show. Welcome to the show, Dr. Mel. It's a pleasure to see you in person and finally uh, uh, back in person. Thank you. It's a pleasure to see you in person and finally a pleasure to meet you. You too. How are you doing today? Thank you. I am absolutely great, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, Dr. Mel, what are your initial thoughts on the topic title of the show, Hurt by the Man You Shared Your Pain With? Well, you know this word that's flying around right now is narcissist. Okay. <laughs> and everyone thinks that their ex is a narcissist. Okay. Like, when I talk to people, they're like, oh, he was a narcissist, she was a narcissist. So, that was the first thought, like... We get into relationships and some of us just don't want to be hurt, but because we've been hurt by someone doesn't make them a narcissist. Okay, okay. Now, uh, do you know of any narcissists personally? No. You know what? Narcissists are really rare. Okay. There's not that many that have been diagnosed. Um, and just because you have a, a high self-esteem and you, you know, love yourself doesn't make you a narcissist. Okay, all right. Now, are you married? I am. Happily married? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I got, got to ask these days because Will and Jada, uh, everybody thought they were happily married and it turned out to be that who knows what the heck is going on. You know what? I have a thought on that. Okay. Like, at first I called him a simp. Okay. Even within my community, we were talking about that. And I was adamant about that. I was like, this man is a simp. <laughs> but when he came out with that most recent video and he said, can you love someone forever no matter what, those are vows. He has just decided he is going to stick true to his vows. Okay. Well, I respect that, uh, but I still think he's a simp. Oh, uh, oh. be honest with you, uh, <laughs> personally. And we're not going to get on right. Will and Jada because I'm finished with those videos. But <laughs> now, how long have you been married? I've been married 24 years. Wow. 24 years. 24. Woo-wee. That's... That's a, a, a testimony in itself because most marriages don't last that long. So uh, I don't know your husband, but he must be a great guy for you guys to be in uh, marriage together and still hanging in in this modern day culture. For sure. Yeah. Now, do you know of any women personally who have been hurt by a man they shared their pains with in hopes that man would be a confidant and would show empathy and sympathy towards them? I do. And... I know uh, this may not be received well, but I'm just going to say it. Sometimes it's the woman's fault. Okay. Because she gives the script to the man, and she tells him what her fears are, what her woes are, all of these things. She gives him the script to kind of hurt her. She's not holding back um, the information. But there's a time and a place to, to give information. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, you know someone per uh, personally, can you briefly share one of those stories that comes to mind without revealing that person's name? Uh, you know, go into a little bit more detail because I'm, I'm, I believe this could help women tremendously. So we're going to call her Tracy. Okay. Just, Tracy. Just to put a name got, to it. Gotcha. <laughs> so Tracy, um, she dealt with some insecurities from a previous relationship. She had been married before. And she went into this new relationship telling this man how she was insecure, um, 
she was not feeling good about herself, wow. that kind of thing. And he used that against her when he was trying to dog her out. Okay. So he would say things like, well, you insecure anyway. You know, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. But he was doing something on her behind her back. But he used what she told her. He she he used what she told him as a um, as a decoy. Okay. You know, she used, he used it against her. Yeah, I think uh, men once the relationship uh, gets to the point where they see that it's not going to work out uh, for one reason or the other, I think they use that uh, to further damage the woman. Uh, by telling her that nobody wants you and, mm. and that's why the last guy or well, the last guy did the same thing to you. Uh, I look at it like this. A woman should not reveal a lot of her personal secrets to a man that she just met. Uh, and every woman is different. It may be six months of thumb, but the thing is you have to really do your due diligence when you're dealing with a guy because when relationships break up, most time people like to uh, do things to hurt you. Right. And if he sees that you are vulnerable uh, in that regard, having a low self-esteem, uh, you don't have any confidence because you've already told him what the other guys did, he's going to do the same exact thing to you. Right, right. Yeah. Now, have you ever experienced uh, this particular hurt uh, before prior to marriage? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, so what makes Dr. Mel so different from the women who have experienced those things? Okay, so the way I dated was different. I know people talk about multi-dating now as if it's new, mm-hmm. but it ain't new. Because no. I did this twenty over 20 years ago. Okay. I multi-dated. All right. Did not, now, I did not have sex with these people. Now, what the, the, before Let's you continue, what does multi-dating mean? Because I don't think, uh, probably the majority of people don't know what multi-dating means. What does it mean? So this is what it means in the Dr. Mail program, okay. right? In Wives and Waiting. All right. Multi-dating is getting to know multiple people at the same time. Okay. So you're vetting them from their from your values. Okay. So you're asking specific, intentional questions. And if the people don't pass level one, why would you continue to go out with them? Yeah. So it's it's eliminating people quickly. So you're not you're not gaining a roster. You're not having five men that you're rotating through or anything okay. like that. You might go out with them one or two times and figure out, you know what? This is not for me. Yeah. So you move it along. Okay. That's multi-dating. And you do not have sex. This is a rule. Yeah. You do not have sex with any of them. None. Zero. That's going to be difficult in itself for most people not to have sex because most people have sex. It's a choice. It's it's a choice. Uh, You don't have to do it. Right. But I believe that's where people get caught up by having sex and allowing soul ties from different men uh, that they're messing with and because uh, God told us not to do it. Right. You know, I didn't wait to have sex. Right. I'll admit it. Now, if I could turn the hands of time back, I would hope to have been a, a virgin, but I can't turn, turn those hands back, uh, the, the hands of time back. But uh, that's what God prefers. But I think when people start engaging in sex prior to marriage, it really affects them more than they think. Because the Bible says, uh, all sins are outside the body, but sex is the only sin that affects the body. Right. Because you're joining, you're becoming one with everybody that you're having sex with. Right. So, why do you think men want to use women's words against them uh, when the relationship sours instead of just leaving? Is it just to hurt them and to, to cause as much damage and pain as they can? I don't think it's intentional all the time. Really? No, I don't. Wow. Because in <laughs> in relationships, sometimes you're going to argue, you're going to fight, but then if you back someone in the corner, they're going to want to win. So that's when they reach into that basket of, you know, you're insecure anyway. Mm-hmm. These are the last time the last two men you were with said the same thing. Yeah. I think they do it to win. But in when you're fighting in a relationship, you shouldn't be fighting to win against your partner. You should be fighting that thing, not not who you're with. So, uh, if the man is mistreating the woman and she wants to get rid of him, but you know uh, he doesn't want to go, he will still pull that trump card. You see what I'm saying? Now, the, the way you just ex- uh, explained it is if uh, he's being pushed in the corner, so now he's going to come out his trick bag. But if he's abusing this woman and she wants to cut him loose, he's going to still 
use her weakest point against her and her weakest point in this uh, according to this topic is that she has revealed all of her weaknesses to him now abuse is different yeah right if we're talking about abuse that's whether verbally whether right. physically right. whether emotionally all of those things is still a form of abuse but uh and not saying that women don't have a role to play in these relationships going sour but uh there is no excuse for a man to abuse absolutely her. Not at all. Zero, zero tolerance. Right. So, do you think it's a form of bullying when a man reminds a woman of her past again and again, which reopens her wounds of pressure? It's a form of bullying, and it's a, it's a, a testament of immaturity. Because if a man loves you, he's going to cover you in your insecurities. He's going to cover you in the areas where you're weak. So he is immature and not able to use those things that he learned about her to cover her. Okay, now, the way you answered that question just had all kind of sickness flowing in my head. Now, a husband is supposed to cover a wife. Right. Not a boyfriend covering his okay. girlfriend because the Bible says man should leave his father and mother cleaving to his wife, not unto his girlfriend. Right. And the woman is not a helpmeet unless she is a wife. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, the thing is, a lot of people are trying to take on the responsibilities or at least playhouse like they were married, but they're not married. But the thing is, they are still being impacted and they don't realize that they're being impacted. Now, I'm seeing this book right here. What is the title of this book? Is this uh, one of your books? Yes, this is the newest one, Wives and Waiting. Um, it's a 30-day journal and it helps women get clear on their purpose and their desire to be a wife. Because I want to be a wife, I want to be married, and I want to have a husband are not synonymous. Okay. All right. So, uh, give a little bit more detail about what this book is because I'm sure that there are women who are going to watch this video who would love to get their hands on this journal, a 30-day journal. Uh, I think it uh, could be a very powerful tool for them to use to try to uh, get a little better understanding of what a wife is. So this journal, um, it took me 10 years to write, first of all. Wow. That's... I have a wise and waiting boot camp. So this ended up being the curriculum that I used in a six month program. Okay. So this really could take you longer than 30 days, it yeah. should. But when women say, I want to be married and I want to have a husband, I ask them, are you ready to be a wife? Because to be a wife, I can only be a wife to my husband. I can't be a wife to my children. I can't be a wife to my friends. So what does that mean? I need to know what it means to be a wife to this man, to be unselfish toward him. Okay. You know, so um, when I ask women, are they ready to be a wife? Some of them, they want a husband, clearly. Why do you want a husband? I want a husband for this. They can have a whole list. But when we get to the list of why do you want to be a wife and what qualities do you bring to the table as a wife, it's a cricket. Okay, so who did you look at to learn how to become a wife when you were coming up as a child? Was it your mother, uh, your grandmother, or some some uh, woman that was influential in the church? Did you grow up in the church? Absolutely. All right. So <laughs> who did you look at to get your experience and also to set uh, boundaries when you were dating uh, so that a man would respect you and want to marry you? Who did you look at as your example? So I come from a family of husbands and wives. Oh, right. I do. And I know I'm blessed in that because only one in four African-Americans are even married. So for me to have... African-American women or men? African-American people. Here, people. Right, because okay, okay. women got married men. Yeah. <laughs> some, of, some of them are marrying women. Let's but, not. But yeah, and, and, and God, don't, God don't approve of that, women. Listen, I can assure you that if you marry a woman as a woman, uh, number one, God is not pleased because he said uh, in Romans 1, 26 through 27, uh, that it's unnatural, okay? Two women can't make a baby, so that in itself should tell you that it's unnatural. Uh, but women get divorced from women just as much as men get divorced from men. So being with a woman is not gonna mean that you're gonna have everything smooth sailing. I promise you that. Right. Now, uh, are you, do you have any experience and expertise in counseling women? We do. 
I say we because me and my husband, okay. we do counseling for couples. All right. And then if the men need extra help, he helps the men. The women need extra help. I help the women. But I also have a program called Wives and Waiting for women who desire to be wise. Okay. I help them get that mindset because this ain't no play play thing. Yeah. Be, be ye transformed by the renewing, the renewing of, of your, your mind. mind. Right. Uh, a lot of stuff goes on in our minds that causes us to make choices uh, which is going to be beneficial for us or that's going to be come detrimental for us. Now, when uh, are you believing in Jesus Christ? Yes. He's your Lord and Savior. Yes. On the way to heaven. Yes. Hello, somebody. Uh, when you're counseling women, do you use holy Bible scriptures uh, indoctrinated in Christian theology to act as your guide? Yes. The curriculum that we use is biblically based. All right. Great. Mm-hmm. Great. Awesome. Now, are all of your books written steeped in Christian values? Yes. Okay, so let me tell you what happened recently. Mm -hmm. So I didn't put the scriptures in one of my books. It's uh, called Emotional Intelligence. Okay. And they can get that on my website free. That's a free download. Free download. You know, you know, uh, folks like free stuff. Yes. It's not going to cost you a dime. Right. Now, what is your website before we continue uh, for people uh, to be able to go? And you may have some men who want to uh, Mm -hmm. give it out to their sisters or their aunts or their mothers. Uh, where people can go and uh, get that free down. It is drmelindaharper.com. Spell it out because you know some people just. Dr. Melinda, M E L I N D A, Harper, H A R P E R. Dot com, drmelindaharper.com so they can go get this free download emotional intelligence. But what I was telling you is I didn't put the scriptures in the book, right? Okay. Someone called me and asked me if they could use the book in their Bible study. Okay. And she said, because all these scriptures go with it. She pulled out every scripture. I didn't even have to put it in there. Mm-hmm. But God revealed himself in the book anyway. And I want everyone to get the book. But you know, sometimes people, they get a little turned off by it. But that's okay. It's in there anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there. If, if your book is steeped in Christian values, as you say, they're responsible for... Uh, what they read and what they hear. So uh, now, Dr. Mel, do you think some women continue in that repeated cycle of involving themselves with the same type of men that uses the woman's own words against them? Yes. The cycle is, the cycle goes on. One, you, you, you mentioned it a little earlier, the soul tie. Yes. So if they have not renounced and denounced those soul ties, they're going to keep attracting that same kind of man and go, I call it a merry-go-round. Yeah. They get on that merry-go-round, they go too far, stay too long, and can't find their way back. Wow. Say that again. They go too long. They go too far. They go too far. Stay too long. Stay too long. And can't find their way back. And can't find their way back. Yeah. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen who, who are looking at this video, uh, that can uh, go for you as well. Now say it again, because I forgot already. They go too far. They go too far. Stay too long. Stay too long. And can't find their way back. And can't find their way back. Yeah. Now, that's going to lead to this next topic. Uh, next question, rather. Why do you think so many people, both women and men, especially in the black community, mm-hmm. feel it to be taboo? Feel it to be taboo when seeking a psychologist or a psychiatrist for counseling? I can tell you, Fred. You ready? Yeah. What goes on in this house in this house. That's where that's happening again. Oh, so handle everything within. Right. We're not, nobody needs to know our business. Nobody needs to know our business. Uh, if it happened in here, stays in here. Don't be going out there telling everybody what we do here. That is, that's destructive. Very destructive. And, it, and, and if we're talking about cycles here, we're talking about family cycles if it's happening to mom and dad, they don't get counseling. Mm-hmm. They try to tough it out. And it's going to be cycled down and passed down through the children as well. Mm-hmm. And through their children's children. Right. I don't think there's anything wrong with seeking counseling if you have uh, uh, a low self-esteem. Uh, if you have insecurity issues, you cannot handle it on your own. Uh, and the number one uh, thing to go to is the Bible. Because it's God's word. You know, uh, I've used it many times before, but I've also saw counseling before, and I'm not crazy right. at all. And that counseling helps because somebody is sitting there listening to you express your, your, your most inner thoughts, 
and they have certain techniques, uh, certain skills that they've been taught professionally, uh, especially if they are Christian and they're saved and they're using uh, spiritual scripture to help guide them in giving you the right advice. But it, it's helped me and it can help you. Now, uh, do you think a woman that tells her deep secrets to a man too quickly without doing her due diligence is destined for ruin in that relationship? Yes, there's a scripture on that. Don't throw your pearls before swine. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cast your pearls before swine. Right. But they will be trampled on. They will be trampled for sure. Now, do you know of any encouraging Bible scriptures off the top of your head? I, I know this is a, a, a question that you didn't anticipate, but uh, I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, do you know of any encouraging Bible scriptures off the top of your head that you can share that would be encouraging for women who experience being hurt by that man they shared their pain with? So, no. Not off the top of my head. Okay. And that's okay because I'm about to tell them what they can do for themselves that I do for me. Okay. I keep encouraging things on my phone. All right. I do. So, and I have them in categories. Okay. I'm, I'm teaching y'all something right now. Yeah. And this is what I teach my women. She's teaching you something now. This is coming from uh, Dr. Mel Harper. This is coming from Dr. Mel. Dr. Okay. Mel. That's what uh, people know her by on her social media platform. Dr. Right. Mel. Okay. She's fixing to give you some advice that's going to be helpful and beneficial to you. And some practical tips. And some practical tips for free. All right. For free, y'all. Listen. So, and I'm going to go back for one second. When me and, there was a time when I wanted a divorce. Okay. So we can come back on another show and talk about yeah, that yeah, and how sure. we stayed together. Okay. And it's all good, right? Yeah. There was a time when I could not pray for myself. It was that, it was that deep. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I bought these cards. They're called the Bread of Life. I bought some cards. And every hour, on the hour, I would take out one of those cards and read that scripture to myself and put it on my desk. So by the end of the day, I had about 10, 15 cards. So now I don't carry cards in my pocket. I keep it on my phone. So here's one of the scriptures for the ladies. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Do not throw away your confidence, right? 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So you don't have to memorize all the scriptures. It's in my heart. I can bring them up. But when there's times when I just need them and I just want to read, I just go through my phone and scroll and get what I need. Psalms 139 and 14, we are made in God's image. So just knowing that I'm made in God's image makes me happier, makes me feel better because I know I'm I'm made just like he is. Yeah. And being made in God God's image should tell you that God wouldn't want you to be mistreated. Right. If God says that uh, you are his creation, out of all the creatures, the creatures that God created, you are the most valued. So that means you are loved by God, and God would not want any woman or any man to be mistreated. Uh, so uh, a, a few scriptures that comes to mind uh, for me is Jer uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, be strong and courageous. You know, those are for people who have low self-esteem, uh, who have insecurity issues. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 says, strong confidence comes from trusting the Lord. Okay? Uh, there are several scriptures in the Bible, but like Dr. Mill said, you have access to a phone. I don't know anybody that does not have a phone. And you can go on Google and search for anything else you want. If you are uh, suffering from low self-esteem, go to the uh, uh, Google and type in scriptures, Bible scriptures for low self-esteem, Bible scriptures for insecurities. And it's going to pull up a plethora of scriptures for you to be able to build yourself up. But don't try to build yourself up. You build yourself up by yourself. God did not create us to be loners. You know, uh, he did not create us to be uh, recluse. He created us for fellowship, for relationship. And so if you're not in a church home, find your church home and start getting with somebody who is going to help you, especially uh if you're a woman in the 20s or 30s, 40s, get with a woman who is a believer, a strong believer in Christ, who's a little elderly, that can tell you the ins and outs of, of how life is. Because life happens to everybody. 
and, and you're no different. Life be life. <laughs> life be life. So do you feel that women who divulge so much personal information to men so quickly without even knowing them do so from a lack of self-esteem, self-worth, or even due to an insecurity issue? Um, I would say it's all of that and ignorance as well. Oh. Just not knowing. Okay. And I teach bet from your values. When you know what your core values are, you can ask intentional questions around those core values without the representative showing up. Yeah. But when you're asking questions like, uh, what's your five year plan? Or what do you want in a woman? And then he asks you what you want in a man and you give him your whole list, you're giving him the script. No, oh, you're giving him the script, and even though he know he doesn't meet the requirements, he's going to try to mold himself uh, enough just to get you because you've already given him the, the roadmap, correct? Yes, he is going to be everything you said you want. Yeah, yeah. Because you said that's what you want. And that's exactly correct, ladies. Uh, I think some things you need to hold to the best. Uh, you know, my thing is, for women who meet guys... Uh, and I'm speaking from a man's perspective. I'm, I'm speaking from a seasoned man perspective. I, I, I've been to five different continents, 20 plus different countries. I've been around the world. I've dated women in most most ethnicities. So I'm not a rookie at this. So I know uh, some young young women think that uh, OG an OG can't tell them anything. Trust me, I can. Now, if you listen, you're going to be considered wise. But if you don't, you're going to be in the same category as the women who've been hurt time and time and time again. And men who are streetwise, mm. who've dated a lot of women, <laughs> they can look at a woman who's insecure with low self-esteem, and guess what? You're their target. You are their target. And they are going to pounce on you because they know you're wide open. And just because he takes you out to the Cheesecake Factory... We going I'm going to see Yeah, yeah, we yeah, we we know uh <laughs> right, we, we, <laughs> we know about Alicia who didn't want to get out of the car and go to the cheesecake factory with this uh Indian uh young man Jay who was a nice guy. Right. But a man will treat you out to a couple of nice uh meals because he knows that's all you require. He he knows that's that's all he needs to do to get you because your your steam is so 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 small that he feels like he don't have to do anything else and so you have allowed that to happen time and time again and it's about time that you really stop it <laughs> get this uh wives and waiting because you want to be a wife you don't want to be a girlfriend forever because let me say this if you've never been married you're single if you've never been married now i've never been married and I'll tell them myself, I've never been married. I always desired to be married and still desire to be married. I've been single all my life. Now before somebody say, must be something wrong with him. Dear, nothing wrong with me at all. Because if you've never been married, I guess there's something wrong with you too, huh? <laughs> God only ordains husband and wife. One man and one woman in marriage. He does not ordain boyfriend and girlfriend. So if you look at it from that perspective, and, and women... Stop posting all these uh, pictures of you and your fiance for five years on social media. That's your wife calling? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to even delete this out of the show. But, ladies, you've been engaged for five years. Stop posting all of these uh, pictures of you and your fiance for five years. Because God is not clapping his hands up in heaven. Okay, they've they, they been together for five years.